Grab some of the rules, watch the heads, keep the punches up. And when I shout break, you break clean. And remember, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands. Well, James DeGale says that he would give Carl Froch nightmares, but tonight it's about giving Stefan Bozic nightmares in this ring at Glow in Blue Water. This is someone that DeGale should deal with in some style, but Bozic does pose a threat. And let's see if James DeGale can produce what Tyson Fury wanted, a flashy performance and a performance for all of us to enjoy. Little uppercut there from Bozic on the inside. The De Gale looking to make a fast start here. Yeah, he'll want to look good here tonight, James De Gale. He had a terrific win only three weeks ago in Canada, didn't he? Against Sebastian Dimas. Terrific knockout there in the, in the second round. But it went relatively unnoticed because the build up and all the hype to the Frotch catch the fight. So we want to keep the momentum going. Oh, right hook from De Gale, followed by a left and a right to the body of Bozic. Yeah, he was uh, brilliant against Sebastian Demers. Stopped him in the second. Looking to dominate early here behind that southpaw jab, James De Gale. Early pressure from him. Really quick start. Yeah, I mean, Bozic, he's struggling with the southpaw style straight away. His feet, he seems to be too far away from James De Gale. He can't get quite close enough. You see there, there's an example there, fully short, inaccurate, because he's just not close enough. So James here, just got to work with that jab and just keep the distance. And now he's starting to come through with the left hand as well. Yeah, it's a terrific start at the moment. Yeah, this is excellent from De Gale. Softening up Bozic here. Good work to the body. And then switch back to the head. Tell you as well, Team Chunky, family and friends, make some serious noise ringside. Yeah, that was slightly low there from De Gale. But he, he's growing in confidence the more this round goes on. Switching from Southpaw to Orthodox now and back to Southpaw. Look, but again, Bozic inaccurate with his work. De Gale, lovely body shots from him. And two or three of them are starting to get home and they've heard Bozic already. Yeah, that's the notable thing from this performance so far from De Gale. Excellent sharp work to the body of the Croatian. Bozic has to get some joy here. Give himself something that will make him believe. Another shot to the body from De Gale. Excellent opening round, hugely convincing from James De Gale. Well, he wants to be busy, James De Gale, as he builds towards what he hopes will be a world title shot. Out of action for a while since December, but he feels like a man who has been unleashed against Demer in Canada three weeks ago and tonight against Stefan Bozic. He's not giving this Croatian a glimmer of hope. Yeah, well, from the first round, Davey, I mean, he's powering the shots home now because he's hurt his opponent two or three times downstairs. And you just sense that this fella, Bosic, may have some uh, more success on the inside, but he's just been outworked. He's waiting far too long when, when he's on the inside, Bosic. And actually, De Gale is preferring that type of contest in on the inside. It's good work for him. One is last two. Inside two rounds. Stefan Bozic, and as Richie said, he fought for the world title against Dimitri Sardison four years ago. He is uh, a quality operator, but James De Gale is making him look like an also ran here at the moment. Yeah. 
the reach advantage here for De Gea is, is crucial when he's working with that jab. Bosic just cannot close that gap down. He's just too far away, falling short. He's got to do probably one or two things here. He's got to step on the gas a little bit and try and get up to De Gea and maybe push him back onto the ropes. But he's just a sitting target when it's in open spaces there in the, in the centre of the ring. The other thing that's changed with James De Gea is that that knee injury that he was uh, being really troubled by towards the end of last year is cleared up. We saw him here really struggle against Adila Mahumadi, an opponent he should have put away. And uh, he says his knee was really causing him pain. He was in agony at times, but now he feels fresh and ready to go. And you can see that here against Bozic. See, that's what I like to see from De Gea in working with the jab. Very classy with that shot and keeping that distance and gap. Taking a few risks by allowing his opponent on the inside. But I just feel that he has got so much confidence in this contest and really thinks that he can just take the shots and, and land those big body shots and hurt his opponent. Love a there from De Gea. Speed of his work has just slowed a little in this second round. What he mustn't do is allow Bozic back into this fight because he's dominating it at the moment. Well, we've seen in the past, and with it now and again, he can take too many risks on the ropes, and there he got caught with a shot. So he shouldn't really be standing there, James De Gale. He said he was going to clean up his act from these type of mistakes, but he's, uh, he's back into the groove, unfortunately, here. And we just see there, Bosic just catching De Gea with that shot. Probably the only one he did catch him with in the round, but nevertheless, it was a good punch. And let's hope that's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, showing that he's vulnerable though, potentially, showing that he can make mistakes. James De Gea here in the purple and black trunks. The man who wants to be fighting for a world title by the end of this year. The man who thinks that he could Avenge that defeat against George Groves, that he could beat Carl Froch. Has to back up the talk, though, with performances inside the ring, and there were just one or two worrying signs in that second round. On the ropes. And uh, gets caught on the ropes rather too often for many people's liking. He's got a good variety, though, in his work, De Gale. Just showed me a lovely right top. And again, on cue. Oh, was that low? Yeah, time out here. And he's uh, flirted with that a couple of times yeah. already in the fight, De Gale, and Bozic now has five minutes if he wants. Yeah, he was on the blind side of the referee, but I think he's done a couple of low shots. There it was there. But it was difficult for the actual referee to see the punch being landed, but I think he's landed actually a couple of low shots before that anyway. And the referee's given uh, Bozic the benefit of the doubt there. Well, he's taking his time, but as I previously mentioned, he's entitled to. We just saw it there to Ian John Lewis. Okay. And that cry of Chunky goes up around this arena. De Gale's childhood nickname. Now a flurry of action from De Gale. One or two of those punches got through. Slapping right there to the... Top of the head from De Gale, but now Bozic responds. Yep, it's turning out to be a cracker, this one. De Gale there going through the gears, but a good reply from Bozic. And there is always that suspicion and accusation at De Gale that his punches don't hurt enough. Is it a case that Bozic feels that he's felt his power and now can respond with power of his own? Too early to really say that, but Bozic more in this now in round three than he was certainly in the opening round. The tactic from Bozic is just, just playing as simple as it. He's keeping the guard high, he's trying to block them on the elbows and the arms, and then he's waiting for his opportunity. 
And he feels that he always will get that opportunity against the Gale. That's the point. Sometimes sloppy and paying for it a little here. De Gale is dominating though, Dave, no question, but he has to put a little bit more into the shots and try and force the stoppage because he's clearly outclassing his opponent here. But he's just allowing his opponent to recover. And if he recovers, then he's going to gain in, in confidence his Bosic. Oh, he's dominating all right, but does he do enough when he's dominating to put his man away? Intriguing stuff here at the end of round three. Bozic taunting his opponent here. Of course, a lot of that will be empty bravado, but here he comes again, the man from Croatia. So James de Gale won the opening three rounds here against Stepan Vozic, but what looked like it might be quite a short night's work. A minute into the fight looks a little more interesting, Richie Woodall. Yeah, de Gale has dominated up to now, but he's just allowed his opponent to come back and gain a little bit of confidence here and there. And he's starting now to take the shots. That's good, 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 good work. Looping left, followed by the left to the body. When he ups the pace, he looks devastating to Gale, but back comes Bozic. Confidence to land that combination there, Bozic. Remember, 38 years of age, been around, fought for a world title. Nothing necessarily to throw him off his stride here. Gale caught him there as he came in, Bozic vulnerable to that uppercut, and Ian John Lewis says keep it up again, and Bozic walks away to the corner and he calls a timeout. Yeah, and Gale's got to watch what he's doing here, because he'll have a point deducted, I mean, he's, he's thrown three or four low shots, and yet the referee's telling him he's got to keep him up. There it is again. Well, how many warnings before he gets a point deducted? Good left there from De Gaulle. Flashy work from De Gaulle, putting Bozic under pressure. Did really well to switch to the body. Bozic trying to fight back here. Yeah, going through the gears again there, James De Gaulle. Great stuff. But then just allows his man back in. There were flashes of brilliance from James De Gale, and yet, you know, he just takes the left up there, just because he's got his head down, his right, his lead hand very low. He just takes a silly shot. Was it with a big swinging right there, and has a smile to himself, the Croatian, because of the distance by which he missed. It's not just flashes of brilliance from De Gale. It sometimes feels like. Flashes and pockets of work rate as well. Works incredibly at pace and then lets his pace drop. Better there, he picked a couple of shots, took his time there, De Gale. Yeah, planted his feet there and uh, put a couple of power punches in. But uh, that's where he doesn't need to be, Dave. He's got to get off those ropes, stay in the centre of the ring and try and box at range. It's difficult with a man who keeps coming forward, who's persistent, and this, this fella's dangerous. Again, seasoned De Gale watchers would say he spends far too much time on the ropes, and he better keep those punches up as well, because there was another one there that was mighty close to being low. De Gale is dominating. Hard to make a case to give Bozic a round here, but he's still in there. That's good from De Gale though, at the end of round four. Well, real drama here at the glow in blue water. 
The Bozic corner has pulled their man out here. The doctor might have had a look as well, but uh, well, that was really dramatic, Richie. Dramatic, um, I have to say, it's a bit of a mystery. I don't know what is actually wrong with him, whether he's hurt his hand, his rib. I don't know. Remember, there's a couple of low shots that went in, but I think it is a hand problem. Well, he... I'm presuming anyway. I don't really know, but it, it, it's a complete mystery, to be quite honest, why he's been pulled out. Well, against Arthur Abraham, he suffered a hand injury after the second round, and there is history of that happening. We'll try and get to the bottom of that straight away. Ian John Lewis is explaining it to our Master of Ceremonies, Thomas Triber. It's a, it's an unsatisfactory ending mm. to what was turning into not a gigantic test for De Gale, but an interesting no. one nonetheless. Yeah, because Bozic was starting to, to gain a little bit of confidence, but the last 20 or 30 seconds of the last round, that he was he was being totally outboxed. Whether he came back to the corner and just didn't fancy it, I don't know, but if he's injured, then fair play, he, he shouldn't continue, because uh, De Gale was putting some heavier shots together, but it is a bit of a mystery why he has been pulled out. Well, he's uh, got that cold press against his head at the moment. Um, big bruising on the side of his face. He's standing right up uh, in front of us here. But we are still guessing to a certain extent. And we wait now for our MC Thomas Tribe. Ladies and gentlemen, after four completed rounds of boxing, the blue corner advises our referee in charge, Ian John Lewis, to stop the contest. Therefore, your winner by way of technical knockout and still WBC Silver Super Middleweight Champion, James Trunky DeGale. So James DeGale 